Yes, I'd like to talk about a call that a caller that called in to talk heathen um, uh, 450 with Eric Murphy and Fila Bianca, and um, they streamed live on December the 14th, 2020. Um, <clears throat> this is in particular about a caller called Jonathan. Now, Jonathan is a Christian by his own admission. He's a person who believes in the Judeo Christian God, using his words. Um, and he's talking about a friend who's perhaps a non believer or who's perhaps questioning. Um, and he's talking about how his friend had an experience or number of experiences that um, lead him to believe there might be something about this, about a God being, you know, acting on this or a, a God being present or God being existent or something like that. Now, already I have quite a few reservations about this particular call because number one, this is not an experience that happened to Jonathan. This is reportedly and supposedly an existence that happened to his friend. So you already got this is hearsay. This is not the person who experienced it. This is person who's relating somebody else's experience. And even presuming that this Jonathan person isn't being dishonest, he might not have recalled the facts or the, the this what happened, this experience by this other friend. He might not be recalling what was said to him perfectly. He might be embellishing even unconsciously, adding details, deleting details. So already this particular, all these experiences that his friends have are already suspect because they're not the experiences of the person who's had them. It's somebody else reporting on his experiences. And the person that's reporting on his experiences isn't a non-biased person. And even if you want to think he's being totally honest and being a, as careful as he can, there will be details about this experiences that he that's been related to him that he might not remember or might get wrong or as i said you know either intentionally or not intentionally um inflating so there's that issue and then you've got the person who's experiencing them now the person you, you even have to assume here that the person who's so-called experiencing them, and we don't have his first-person accounts of it. So the per person who's supposedly experiencing these things, um, did he remember the experiences properly? Has he misremembered? Has he embellished? Has he, has, you know, any time at all passed between, even if this experience happened yesterday, maybe there could be all sorts of factors as to him not exactly remembering what's happened here so there's this issue as well so i mean so we can assume that this experience has been remembered correctly that it hasn't been mistranslated hasn't been forgotten hasn't been details haven't changed between the person experiencing and the person who's called in okay so according to jonathan his friend had this experience where his friend was in some kind of store. I don't think he said what kind, you know, like a shop or something. I don't think he stated what kind of shop he was in or what, but he was shopping, you know, he was in a store. And he, Jonathan reports that his friend had chest pains. And he, he said, like, what happened is that his friend had chest pains and then a woman came up to him and said, you know, are you having chest pains? And apparently his friend goes, well, how do you know that? And then the woman, I think, laid her hands on his chest and prayed for him or asked to do that perhaps and then laid her hands and prayed on him and the chest pain went away. So this is already very problematic. But 
let's just say for instance this is what really happened okay so chest pain can be caused by a huge number of different things it could be a little bit of indigestion or heartburn it could be just a twinge because a bit of a muscular twinge that can occur it could have been a touch of angina it could have been you know maybe a little bit of a warning that there's a heart issue like a maybe there could be a heart attack down the track as i said there's literally dozens and dozens of explanations as to why this pain and why this pain could be temporary i mean pain often is temporary there is chronic pain and that can happen too but you know a lot of pain is very very temporary and as i said it could have been this guy had a little bit of asthma or pleurisy or CAPD or who knows right so and he said it didn't say how long this guy was experiencing this pain before this woman came up to me but pain can show itself through a number of ways so if you suddenly if you're walking through a shop and all of a sudden your chest starts to hurt your chest you're in pain with your chest you pain shows up physiologically by people might go pale you know slight they lose a bit of color they can might breathe a bit more rapidly you know they're breathing you know it's like it says and these are responses you often don't even control you don't know you're doing them so you might go pale you might start sweating or really and you might you would if you're in pain and depending how bad the pain is if you're walking you might stop or slow down you might unconsciously sort of rub your chest or even clutch your chest or even if you don't do that you might with sort of draw your arms up a bit and you could be slowing very much down in your pace of walking you could be sort of looking a little bit you you have a you know might have a facial expression that people might read as being discomfort you know you could be grimacing or you know sighing or just and you might not even know you're doing any of these things so there's a million different ways that pain you know and as i said rapid breathing maybe they're very gone and very pale and sweating and as i said he even if he's not sort of just unconsciously oh that hurts you know or it could be just clutching the arms or even drawing up his shoulders or and just maybe or oh, even tensing up a bit you know and going oh or maybe sort of ever so slightly hunching over you know which is what you often do when you're in pain so and somebody's seen him walking through or well, being in the shops and as i said he could have just stopped dead while he's in pain or started to walk very slowly and she's maybe reading his signs and looking at him and going well he's grimacing and he's very tense and he seems to be laboring with his breathing a bit he's looking very uncomfortable so is it he says she's going all right okay so he's in pain and i bet a million other people in the shop probably go and thinking oh i wonder if that guy's okay looks like something's bothering him or might it even look like oh has he got a bit of a chest pain i wonder if he's going to be okay so she's like she's the one who's gone up to him right and for whatever reason you know uh, she's asked or just laid her hands on his chest and prayed for him and the pain's reportedly gone away now as i said it <laughs> correlation does not mean causation when she was when you're in pain often if someone just even touches you you know like it can relieve pain like people often do touch parts of their body that are in pain because it can help to support an area that's in pain and her laying hands on him that sort of human contact someone not acknowledging that you look very uncomfortable is a even a psychological help to you 
And I mean, his pain could have already been subsiding before she laid hands on him. And is it so unusual that given that most pain is a very temporary, very quick thing, that that while she's laying hands on him, or after she laid hands on him, that the pain diminishes. I don't think this is... You don't need supernatural causation here. This is, you know, somebody who's come up and touched him, you know, shown human concern. And as I said, his pain could have been going away just because pain, in most cases, tends to diminish or go away. Now, I mean, I certainly hoped if this guy had chest pain in a stall, that he went to the doctor afterwards just to check that there was actually nothing wrong here. I mean, the fact that someone came and prayed and all of a sudden the pain stopped, I mean, whoop de do It doesn't solve what actually the problem is with his pain. And, I mean, I would even question whether or not she helped here. I mean, sure, the pain went away when she touched him and prayed, you know, but the the root cause of the pain was not treated. And in fact, she didn't really do anything at all. I mean, she just provided a little bit of human comfort, which in a lot of re- in a lot of cases will reduce somebody's pain. Nothing to do with her praying, everything to do with her being a person being concerned, checking his, you know, come on, blah, blah you know, touching him and everything to do with that, nothing to do with the prayer. I certainly hope, you know, he went to a doctor. And so for this experience to be something that somebody thinks, well, maybe there is a God, it's really, it's an argument from ignorance and it's presuming an awful lot here. And it's also ignoring a lot of the stuff that we do know about people's you know, anatomy and physiology and how things like pain and how people present pain work. It, it's ignoring everything that we do know. And so it's it's really, if you're having these sorts of experiences where that happens, I mean, to me that's nothing. It's There's no case here for saying that a prayer achieved anything. In fact, there's less than no case. It's downright, um, I think, dangerous. And it's also very, okay, she came and prayed even the pain got better. But the pain was probably diminishing anyway. Or somebody touching you, maybe putting a bit of a pressure on a painful area, which can help. You know, it does help in many cases. And I think to you need to start thinking there could be some kind of God over that kind of experience. There's really, there's no, there is no case to be made for a God intervening there. And there's a ton of other evidence that you would be ignoring, like, and it's a naturalistic. Everything they're having can be explained very easily by naturalistic means and by naturalistic methods. And if you're going to be convinced by experiences like that, I think you need to stop and maybe reconsider all the other stuff that we can explain, you know, can do, and what we can show, rather than start looking at supernatural explanations. And, I mean, to me, you know, for someone to come off up to you and offer to lay hands on you and to pray, it's a little bit... To me, look, she probably meant very well, and obviously this... Well, obviously, I can say, because... We don't talk to the guy who said it, but we don't know what he thought about someone coming and doing that to him. Maybe he just said, oh, you know, thank you. You know, someone's at least concerned. I'm I'm in, you know, pain. I'm discomforted. Someone's showing concern about me. That's great. I mean, we don't know. I mean, to me, it's a little bit, but look, she obviously meant, well, I don't know what she meant. We don't know if she meant, well, we don't know her side of the story. We have no idea. And um, so to me, this is nothing. It's a story that 
it's a story. It doesn't prove anything. And I don't think the guy, all the, you know, who's questioning all the theists should be impressed by this at all. Or anything other experiences like this. This is not impressive. It's not even, this is not weak evidence. It's not evidence for a god. This is not, it's pathetic. I mean, you know, and as I said, I certainly hope this guy, if, you know, if this at all story is at all true, went to get, like, at least a medical checkup at some point, you know, because the pain might be nothing. Who, as I said, it could be a pulled muscle, but the very least you should do is get a checkup by a medical professional, at, you know, in the week after that this happened, just to see, you know, is everything okay? Because you're not a doctor, you don't know, it could be, and most likely this pain is just nothing. Could be just, you know, you're breathing and all of a sudden you just get a bit of a, you know, a stitch or a bit of a, you know, and it's like, but you, relying on the fact that someone laid hands on you and prayed that you suddenly got better, I think he's crazy. And it's irresponsible for your own health. But that's my thoughts on this, and I don't think anyone should be promoting this as any kind of evidence, weak or strong, good or bad, about a god. It just isn't.